Hello and welcome to the channel, Ruckasaurus Rex, where we discuss and review all things dinosaur and other prehistoric animals. Today, what we're going to do is continue on with our Late to the Party campaign. Yes, indeed, that is the Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series, um, Late to the Party, so that's why it is so named. Uh, and I immediately fell in love with this line. What we're looking at today is the Avaceratops lamercy. Now, Avaceratops is named for, it was discovered by a, a gentleman known as uh, uh, Eddie Cole, and he named the uh, his discovery after his wife, Ava Cole. So uh, it means uh, Ava's horned face, believe it or not. So uh, you see what we got going on in the packaging. Uh, you see that beautiful artwork of our Avaceratops right there on that sleeve. Then, of course, we have the uh, Beast of the Mesozoic logo as well as the Triceratops avatar. Then we turn to the rear and we see uh, artwork that's going to be on the, uh, the uh, collectible card that is included with the figure. And... Uh, as you can see, this is number 13 in the line. It's actually uh, part of wave two of the Ceratopsian series. And you see up top, Avaceratops and Lamercy, uh, Aver's horned face. And you see that number 13 here. It has a readout, which uh, is uh, as follows. Length up to 4.2 meters or 14 feet long. Location, Judith River Formation, Montana, USA, at a time period late Cretaceous 77 million years ago. Avaceratops is a bit of a curiosity due to its skull frill lacking fenestrae, um, which is similar to uh, Triceratops, by the way. It had a solid frill, a characteristic shared only with uh, Triceratops. I guess I should have just continued reading, huh? Despite this similarity, its closest known relative is Nasutoceratops. Nasutoceratops is uh, centrosaurine, by the way. So um, that technically makes Avaceratops a centrosaur, but it's uh, kind of like in between, which is crazy. Uh, its closest known relative, as I stated, is Nasutoceratops. Avaceratops lived in wet, heavily forested environments. Art is by Raul Ramos, who has given us plenty of beautiful artwork before. Looking at the top of the sleeve, it reads 19 points of articulation, realistic movement and detail, profile card included, and once again, number 13. Sliding off that sleeve, I took the liberty of already uh, cutting away the, uh, the tape. You see the checklist for uh, Wave 2, and uh, as far as what we have uh, reviewed so far, uh, we've reviewed um, practically everything with the exception of Avaceratops and uh, Pachyrhinosaurus, and uh, that review is coming very soon. So uh, never you fret. I've uh, been uh, diligently working my way uh, getting all of these uh, figures, and uh, I'm almost complete, as you will all eventually see. Anyhow, getting us back to the front, now you'll be able to see the figure fully in there. As you all know, the tail comes separated and when I uh, pull uh, Ava out of the uh, packaging it will be uh, fully assembled. And as always as with all Beasts of the Mesozoic action figures they come included with a backdrop so you could uh, display your figure within it to make some uh, pretty dynamic uh, scenes there and uh, this backdrop is no exception the readout stated that uh, avaceratops lived in uh, wet wetlands and uh you know like forests like rainforests and things of that nature so this uh this is very apropos it looks great and uh i will be uh utilizing it for uh, backdrops both for the avaceratops and for uh, for other things and here's the collectible card as i mentioned earlier they all come with one and uh, it's got that Royal Ramis artwork and of course that uh, the information that I read earlier is on the back of the card. On the back of uh, this uh, packet there we get instructions on um, how to heat up the tail if it needs to be heated in order to uh, apply it to the body uh, either with uh, hot water or with like a, uh, a hair dryer. My tail actually went on easily so um, that was pretty fortunate. So here we have our beautiful Avaceratops on our rotating base so you can see uh, the all-around view of this uh, 
Creative Bee Studios creation here. Looking very nice. This is uh, this uh, color scheme is uh, based on the uh, flying dragon lizard, which is uh, you know got that that green motif there. So uh, as always, they base it on existing reptiles and amphibians. Their uh, their action figures. It's a base, and then of course they take artistic license to uh, personalize the uh, set figure, and uh, that's what's been done here. It's looking very nice. Uh, we're going to get our uh, Aviceratops off of the uh, platter and uh, take a, uh, a closer look at this figure. So the first thing we'll do with our Aviceratops is take a measurement from beak to the tip of the tail. We're coming in at 10 inches. In uh, doing the calculation, these uh, action figures are scaled at uh, 118. So, uh, Aviceratops was supposed to be, uh, it was reputed to be about 14 feet long, one of the uh, smaller uh, species of this, uh, of this group of dinosaurs. So, at uh, 10 inches, and uh, doing the calculations for a 118 scale figure, that puts it at about 15 feet long representative animal. So, it's a little bit bigger, but um, it is a guesstimation that it's 14 feet, I believe. Originally, the first uh, specimens found was uh, it was surmised that it was about 11 feet, and then it got uh, um, they found another skull, and then they uh, you know they they did what they did, and they came up with about 14 feet. So, whatever the case might be, it's in there, you know, give or take a few inches. So that's what we have going on. As far as a nice close-up view of our Aviceratops, looking at that uh, beautiful skull, as always, you know how it is with me, guys. The, uh, the skulls on Ceratopsians are definitely the highlights of uh, these particular animals. And uh, despite its slightness of stature, the same uh, is uh, said for Aviceratops. You see it's got that uh, short frill, and uh, it is reminiscent of a Triceratops when you think about it. Um, and uh, as it stated, uh, there are no fenestrae, so there are no holes, meaning there are no holes here at the top of the frill. It's solid, just like a Triceratops, even though um, it was related and is probably technically a uh, centrosaurine. Um, it uh, really looks like it's a uh, like a, a go between centrosaurs and chasmosaurs because of it. So uh, scientists have had a very difficult time trying to really place it. But um, it is uh, closely related to a Nasutoceratops, which is a Centrosaurian dinosaur. So anyhow, that probably makes it Centrosaurian as well. But enough about that. We will be checking out the details and uh, looking at uh, that skull. It's beautiful. Like I said, it's, we've got a mostly green base there. You got browns in there. The eye, if you can see that, is uh, painted blue with a black uh, with black pupils. So that's pretty cool. The horns. It's got a, uh, a bone color with uh, at the base it's uh, black and it's got like a charcoal gray wash or dry brush going uh, uh, over it giving it a very nice looking weathered look which is cool. Looking at the spikes or studs whatever you want to call it going around the frill it's got a uh, kind of like a uh, tannish color to it with uh, some uh, dark dry brushing the same you've got that same tan color going right down the middle of the frill and the uh, the boss on the nose it's got the same thing and uh, you've got those nice colors uh, there on the snout there and of course that uh, the, the color on the beak is uh, very similar to what you have on the horns only it's not as uh, uh, dry brushed with the black so it appears a lighter you've got some black there at the where the uh, where the skin of the snout meets uh, the beak so you've got that and of course the You've got uh, the lower jaw has got like a lime colored brush over a, like a cream color over that and uh, opening the mouth there which of course is one aspect of the articulation. It's pretty difficult to see but you could but as you can tell you've got some paint in there and this is the hard part. I don't know if you guys can see it but uh, our Aviceratops does have teeth so there that is. Then going to the uh, looking at the uh, the back of the frill, 
it's just uh, basically that uh, like kind of lime green with uh, brownish uh, dry brushing and then you got browns uh, at the top of the body of the neck over there and it bleeds down uh, into stripes that green it's kind of like a blue green and it goes into a uh, kind of like a, a sea green and then of course it becomes lime green at the legs uh, the base of it is like a lime green and then it's a darker green brush You've got some dry brushing going on there and it's almost totally lime green at the toes the toe the, uh, at the feet rather the toes are uh, painted a, a dark brown the three that are supposed to have the uh, the uh, the nails on them or the claws they do uh, and then of course the four in the back when you're looking at the rear uh, they're painted as well and it's got that same lime colored and looking at the back you see uh, the same brown very similar tail as well looking at the top pretty cool at the top you see that it's uh, like that blue green color uh, bleeding out from that brown and uh, going down it's more of that uh, sea green bleeding out from the from the brown from the tail as it tapers on and then you have this uh, kind of like yellow green it's and you see the brushing there cream colored uh, underbelly you do have a cloaca there and uh, turning to the other side it repeats itself and uh, that is our uh, avaceratops as far as articulation goes 19 points there we already went through the mouth as you can see you can open the mouth the head can uh, turn left and right You've got some with the neck. I think I'll just have to warm mine up a little bit, but you can see that you do get some with the neck. So in combination, you can get Avisertops to, uh, you know, some style. It can also rotate. So that's pretty cool for some attitude right there. Uh, torso. The Avisertops actually gives you more torso work than most of the Ceratopsians. You can get it down further up than normal. You can go left and right, and of course you can get that twist, which I get more twist out of Ava Ceratops than any other Ceratops I've gotten so far. As far as the uh, forelimbs are concerned, it can rotate and splay, as you can see there, it will splay. At the elbow, you have articulation and it will swivel. Then at the uh, feet, you can go up and down and you can pivot it and rotate it. The hind leg, it can rotate, it can splay out very slightly. You've got articulation at the knee joint and that also swivels. At that secondary joint, you have articulation. And then of course at the feet, you can go up, down, and it can uh, swivel. Tail, up, down, left and right. And of course, if you wanted to, you could uh, twirl it. And uh, that is our articulation for our beautifully colored Avaceratops. And now to compare our Avaceratops with other beasts of the Mesozoic centrosaurine dinosaurs, we start off with uh, quite possibly my favorite out of the bunch so far. We've got the Xenoceratops. And uh, I have to take note while I'm doing this, they, uh, there is a listing. If you were to look at most listings of uh, centrosaurine dinosaurs, Avaceratops is usually at the bottom with like either an asterisk or something because they really still aren't sure where to place them. It's just that they know that it was closely related to Nasutoceratops, but they still seem reluctant or at least hesitant to place it as a uh, centrosaurine. Anyhow, I just figured uh, you guys would want to note that. Next up, we have the Sinosaurus, and you can see the uh, differences in sizes there. Sinosaurus is a 20-foot uh, long animal, and, uh, well, this BOTM, Avaceratops, is basically what would actually represent a 15-foot long animal, but you could see uh, the differences, you know, that length, you know, we usually think about length, but uh, there's width, girth, and everything else that goes with it. So um, a lot of times, you know, five feet, an extra five feet can go a long way, as you can see. And finally, the type species for which this subdivision, if you will, is so named, we've got Centrosaurus itself, another 20-footer, uh, uh, more or less. Uh, this particular, actually, this is a, uh, I think it's like a 19-footer, 
something like that, if I recall off the top of my dome. But I mean, it's still in that neighborhood regardless. This particular uh, figure is, if I recall, is a little oversized, but uh, you still get the point there. Um, we uh, see now, you know, the, uh, the differences. And uh, once again, uh, Avaceratops is still in that, uh, we don't know what it is, uh, type of category. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, like I said, that's Central Source. Some honorable mentions, BOTM has uh, made figures of Diabloceratops uh, and uh, Medusaceratops and Wendyceratops are also Centrosaurine uh, Ceratopsian dinosaurs. So, uh, and uh, BOTM has made uh, figures of all of those, as you guys well know, because we have reviewed them. So in conclusion, the Beast of the Mesozoic by Creative Beast Studios, Avaceratops, another welcome addition, a very beautiful color after the uh, Flying Dragon Lizard is, uh, well, you know, one of the smaller uh, additions to this line, as well as one of the smaller members of the Ceratopsian uh, family. Uh, as an enigma of sorts, uh, considering that um, it resembles a uh, like an ancestor to uh, Triceratops, but is uh, closely related to Nasutoceratops, and Nasutoceratops is a uh, centrosaurine dinosaur, whereas Triceratops is a Casmosaurian dinosaur. So that's just crazy. Uh, scientists don't know where to place it, but uh, we know where to place it. We love it. So um, that's really all that needs to be said about that. You know, it's got the 19 points of articulation, of course, making sky's the limit. The backdrop is on and cracking, as you guys can see. I told you I'd utilize it, and it looks very, very nice right there. Uh, yeah, what more can I say? other than repeating myself or gushing over it like I've been doing for this whole line. So I will stop myself right there before I become nauseating. Anyhow, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments, questions, critiques uh, below. And if you want to be notified when I upload another video, hit that bell and notified you shall be. This is the Eviceratops from Beast of the Mesozoic. And this has been Rockasaurus Rex. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys.